you know, two tier, the two tier world that we are apparently living in. I think the problem sometimes when um, we get fixated on things, I'm not saying there's not a reason to talk about two tierism in society, is that it's a bit like putting on glasses with coloured lenses, right? Uh, once the sort of concept of two tier established, it's like, um, oh, everything's two tier. Um, and I think we've got to be a bit careful about that. But we also do need to have discussions about society and the perceptions that people have of things not being fair. Um, to take forward this conversation, let's speak now to Dr David Lowe, who's a former police officer and senior research fellow at Leeds Beckett University. Dr David, it's great having you on the programme. Now, the latest to wade into the two-tier debate is Dale Vince. And he says that... Um, Actually, the fact that you've got a Just Stop Oil protester who's received a five-year prison sentence for their role in conspiring to cause gridlock on the M25, while a man pleading guilty to violent disorder received a significantly shorter sentence, is two-tier. I mean, where does the two-tierism stop? Is there two-tierism going on right now in police and the justice system? Well, it, it sort of appears this way, and I understand why people, people are saying that. Um, I think what we're going to look at with this particular situation with the Just Stop Oil, this is a separate piece of legislation. It's the Police Court Sentence, uh, it's the uh, Sentencing Courts Act. Now, under Section 70, that came through. That's what the Just Stop Oil uh, individual was convicted for. And it is a bit controversial. The part that really you're looking at is under that section is serious annoyance, uh, serious inconvenience serious loss of amenity and we know why the government at the time introduced that piece of legislation you had just stop oil and other environmental groups like animal rising uh, who were blocking roads who were basically stopping people going about their business and we saw those issues where they were blocking roads and some drivers were getting obviously upset and trying to remove them whereas the one in Southport this has been two offences, violent disorder in the public order act. Now, the one for the Just Stop Oil that had a maximum sentence of 10 years, and he got five. For the one in Southport, uh, violent disorder carries a maximum sentence of five, and there was assault on a emergency worker that carries a sentence of three. What the judge did was sentence him to three years um, and run concurrently with the offence for assault on the emergency worker. So while it may look too tiered if it was under the same piece of legislation then maybe there would be an argument but i think looking at it from a, a legal point of view and how the courts are trying to trying to deal with this uh you've got two separate pieces of legislation two separate incidents and um that is why we see that disparity what about um i mean something that's freaking a lot of people out right now um is the crackdown on uh, people who have potentially maliciously used social media uh, because it's sort of to me relatively neo legislation i mean there are things that exist already in law um but people are concerned that i mean look, just just looking at one tweet here there's been a 26 year old dad of three put in prison for almost three years for saying words i don't know what words uh, he has particularly said and whether he actually directly called for you know x or y to happen um but this person's saying you know he's a young man of 26 with kids um, perhaps community service would have been better and a three-year prison sentence is going to ruin his life. We have, have also got um, the story of, of I think, 55-year-old woman who was putting dinner on the table for a family and got the knock at the door, was taken into police custody. She had been one of the first people to repeat the false name of the Southport killer. Um, and then apparently a couple of hours later said that's not right you know that that's, i've made a mistake here um and she was taken to the police station and held in custody for 48 hours that to me seems funny right and, and the reason i say that is because i mean normally if you're going to hold someone in custody you do so because you think they're going to be a danger to society one would assume and if the police wanted to investigate whether that 
tweet had particular ties. I mean, you know, she doesn't to me fit the profile of somebody who's got mates in grey shirts, uh, brown shirts, you know. But you know, I don't think we should sort of jump to conclusions. But that does seem relatively heavy handed and people are sort of worried about the direction of travel here. So I just want to sort of ask you for your opinion on all of this and, and how the government and the Crown Prosecution Service and judges up and down the land should be handling this stuff when it comes to the relationship between what we saw take place on the streets and social media? Yeah, I have concerns about this too, Alex. It is, it's got a bit of a, a chilling effect, this. Um, yeah. Because what we're talking about is our freedom of expression on the European Convention on Human Rights, it's Article 10. And we have to hear the heretical, the offensive, the insulting. Uh, that, that is permissible, so long as it doesn't incite hatred or glorify or promote violence. Those, what If you do that, you don't have the protection of freedom of speech. But what is quite concerning, she said, I mean, uh, unless she was, a, which she wasn't, she wasn't arrested under terrorism act, we have then up to seven days uh, in, in police custody. It'll be the Police and Criminal Evidence Act up to 24 hours. Then there can be an extension of 12 and then another 12 hours from a court. Uh, for that, but then that's the maximum. You know, it was an issue there after that stabbing, and I knew there would mostly be some misinformation, uh, conspiracy theories, and we did see it. And a lot of people got caught up in it. Now, to me, it's applying a common sense approach to this. People have innocuously, unknowingly, a retweet. Uh, or shall, shall we should say repost now because we're on X, I'm, I'm, I'm still calling it Twitter, um, or TikTok, whatever. Doing this, I mean, we, we, we have to take a common sense approach. Mm. Now, obviously, we, we'll have to wait and see what happens, uh, should she plead guilty and so on. But yeah, I think it is, it, it's the chilling effect for me is that you're, all your social media is being monitored. Well, yes, so long as it's not bringing people towards violence. I and mean, it's interesting, I mean, obviously I was listening to your previous discussion. You've got people saying outside uh, the reform headquarters, neo-Nazis off our streets. They're not Nazis. I mean, I don't want to sound pedantic here, but they're not. The, the neo-Nazis white supremacists, who are a big problem, they are, yes, they're, they're racist, they're mm. anti-Semitic, anti-disability, they want an overthrow of a liberal democracy. They are the ones who still read Mein Kampf for texts that have come out since, like James Mason Siege, who encourages an overthrow of liberal democracy. Mm. I haven't heard the Reform Party say that, and they've got five MPs in Parliament. They believe in the democratic process. You may dislike what the Reform Party is saying. Yeah. And then you may, you may find it insulting, heretical, and so on, but, but it's within freedom of expression. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm p so, p to pick you up on that, 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 that was, un until relatively recently, my party. I know it very well. I can reassure you that these are really good people who just want the best for the country. You know, Rupert Lowe, a Nazi, he's given his MP salary for projects in the community for crying out loud. It's utterly ridiculous. It's abhorrent. But these people are shouting Nazi scum off our streets i don't want to go outside my house now and yet nothing's being spoken about in that regard and um, and i think this is like you said the, the social media stuff has a chilling effect um and it doesn't seem to me to have been applied equally because for a long time i mean you know i think when people are sort of saying uh, you know, you're a Nazi, get them off the streets. You've got the Socialist Workers' Party saying we need to put our foot on the necks of fascists. That is inciting hatred against people who just have a different political opinion. Now, if you said you've got to put the foot on the necks of a different religion, you're being clink right now. And I, and this this is what a lot of people out there are, are scared of. And I don't quite know how we put this back in the box. I don't know whether we should be scared of it or not. Is there just a sense that because everything's been happening in such a whirlwind that, you know, people on you know, the right wing who vote reform suddenly feel like they're going to be thrown in clink and actually probably not going to happen at all? Um, and, and then at the same time, you know, David, th those two kids at Manchester Airport who beat up the police and all the noise and the madness surrounding that were on BBC and Sky News given a live press conference before they've even been charged. It is madness. Yeah, I saw that with their, with their solicitor because they've got a change of solicitor now. 
Yeah. Um, Not the one who was inciting yeah. rioting. <laughs> yes. I think uh, they saw a bit of sense and, and decided to get someone who, who actually would uh, do a better job legally representing them rather than trying to get uh, fame uh, for, for their insight. Well, you know, we've got to be careful here because, again, it's of due to say we've got a police officer who's being investigated as well as those two uh, young males. I think you're right what you're saying. It is getting the balance right and understanding. You know, I mean, again, the, the, the term's been banded. Anybody who took part in these protests well, past as far right. I think of that march on, or the assembly on the 27th of July, um, when it was about British being British. Now, I saw there uh, not just white British people, I saw British people from various ethnicities who wanted to preserve British culture. And I think that's what we've got to get it right. I mean, you can talk about the far right. I have an argument. I say you can be in the far right anti-immigration, but you're not necessarily racist. Now that may sound uh, a paradox to say that. You can be anti-Islam, the religion, but not anti-Muslim. Mm. Uh, and this is where we've got to be so careful with terms. Yeah. We've got to be so careful that our emergency services and the police don't just have a, uh, a knee-jerk reaction to it. We've got to take this sensibly on the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, and look at it. What is it people are protesting? I have no time for those who joined in and took part of the violence. There are, there are those who, who got involved, and I'm sorry, then, then you feel the full force of the law. And the police should police without fear or favour, and it doesn't matter what background, what your protest, mm. what your issue is. Do not uh, incite violence. Do not incite hatred. If you do, you cross the line. And, you know, there is an issue. I think some people see it where there are uh, a large demonstration for those police officers to go and make an arrest in the middle of that crowd. One, puts them in danger. But there's so much surveillance going on now, and we've seen it. Now, we saw it in Leeds with the ones we've set fire to the bus and so on. They were later arrested. Uh, so you you will be arrested later on uh, with the evidence. I think we, we, we've got to calm down a little bit and just see it for what it is. And those who've got a genuine grievance about, because I look at some protests, that it's not just about Southport. For mm. me, it's about issues of illegal immigration. Mm. Who's paying for that? Um, there's fears of grooming gangs. There's fears of women not feeling safe. I've I heard yourself saying that before. Mm. Uh, when, when, when you've been busted. Um, there's a number of issues, and that, that's, that's what's concerned people. Yeah, well, and but do you know what? Do it. It, it just Exactly. And we haven't been speaking about these things. And frankly, I think that, you know, the way we're going now, we're going to be able to speak about them less. Because I've had some fitful nights thinking, gosh, you know, when I said that I think there's um, a risk that there's going to be increased sexual assaults and harassment of women from, uh, you know, a lot of men coming from very different cultures who don't uphold the sort of rights of women in their home countries that we do here. I'm now thinking, is my collar going to be felt? Can I be sort of blamed for now people going and setting fire to a hotel? It's quite scary. Um, thank you ever so much, uh, Dr. David Lowe, for joining us. We're